Hi everyone, uh, Rashid Story here with you, Chief Operating Officer of Polo Reef, and we have the one and only Andrew Sandler, the owner and founder of uh, Polo Reef. So uh, this is episode two, and we wanted to make sure that we hit on uh, the, a very important subject uh, here in our hobby, which is lighting. Um, so Andrew, tell me, why, why did we bring Tulia? Why was that important? What, did, what were you trying to do differently? These max spec commercial lights that we have are only two channel. We had a visual feeling just by looking at the tank that they were slightly light in the violets, right. relative. Yeah, that's it, I see there's nothing there's nothing below, there's nothing. You got no UV, nothing below right. 400. Right. Nothing, absolutely nothing above 700. Correct. And just your, your indicative blue. And not much here either. No. And when we looked at the spectral analysis of the tank, it was rather compressed uh, with the big blue peak. Only a little bit of, um, I said violets. I thought that violet was too too thin on the, on the graph, you know. And all the rest of the colors, uh, the whites, the reds, the greens, they were like really trailed off. And I, how far is how far is the spectrum going down? Right here. What? That's five, ten. That's uh, yeah. Five fifty. Like, like like five between five ten and five hundred. Yeah, that's typical. Okay. Yep. Some people think that grows the coral. So the point is, is that even with any real critical, you know, when we do the other measurement, but we can definitely see that there's a huge difference. How far low did you get there, down there? Yeah, you know, about 280, about 280 up, because here's the thing. Remember something, Andrew, we measured, we measured UVB. Right. Which means that there's about some 280 up. Right. In this radius. Correct. And so we found seven bulbs, um, all in the 10K range. And we did that really because when we did 20K or radiums, they were the same spectrum as we were using in a tank already. So we you didn't see anything different. Right. There was no extra white. Uh, so we used Tulio's uh, 250 watt double-ended. They are, the 250s are, um, basically where the corals at, the, at its highest in the tank. Right. And every place else where we needed to go down, I don't know, four, five, six feet and, and more, we have and the, the 400 watts. watts. The corals have already adapted right. to the light that they have. Correct. Okay. It might just be as simple for now Supplemental. Anyway, is supplement some. Of course. To, to change them just for the sake of changing them, there's no- No, I no, get it, I get it. But, but, I will say this, for example, it, it, again, we're done for now, but if you took that light and you put that light over, you would see even the colors of your fish, Andrew, they would just right. come right out. Uh, the par readings, again, we've taken off white LEDs and put these on, right. and the thesis is, a white LED, guys, is basically uh, a mixture of colors, colors, and it actually has a blue, um, I don't know the word is cap, because, right. you know? So it even looks bluer because the white LED is blue. So my view was, why not supplement the tank? The, the halide has more violet right. than at least these lights. <laughs> Uh, we can get some more broadband colors in there and reds and stuff like that, okay? UVB. And uh, UV and, and infrareds and stuff like that. So you're basically expanding your light stream from, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say 400 to 700. And now with the halides, uh, it probably goes down to 370, 380. Some of those bulbs 
uh, and I would say you're you're probably well into 750s and 800s also on the outskirts. So we did this mainly for the look of the tank because combo, LEDs grow. Combo, combo. LEDs grow, grow corals amazingly. Yeah, right? especially so, the blues. But we also knew, based on the spectrum analysis that we saw Tulio put together, you know his little meters to figure out what, what does do we have UV or UVB or not. I know we're thinking about some experiments. You know. You know, does that actually help the, the health of the corals and the fish, et cetera? Yeah. We still don't know, but based on the looks of things, it looks a lot better. There, there, there are a few different chlorophyll peaks in the violets that I felt like we were missing, and a little bit between, let's say, 550 and 650. Right. And just to have that little bit of red for a few hours a day, um, I think it helps the corals also. There's actually some chlorophyll there also. Not a lot. I know a lot of people think it causes algae. I know a lot of people shut the red channels off. But look, we were at um, ACI and we were at Top Shelf. They run with supplemental highlights. As long as you've been reef keeping, we've wondered about the spectral composition of the radium lamp. Yep. We've wondered about the performance. And yep. We have the equipment. And, and again, we've often speculated what the difference between LED and metal halide systems are. Yep. Now, just a minor correction for the. And video. So, just, just so the people know here, the two halide bulbs we are testing one is a double ended one from Tulio's uh, sh shop uh, with his fixture. It looks. Well, to you guys, it looks more 10K daylightish, a little bit more, and then the radium 20K bulb, uh, which is an aluminum reflector, also 250 watts, same wattage as as, uh, as the double ended. But I know Rashid, the, these XHOs are off. Is that correct? Correct. So we we're only comparing metal halide to metal halide. Uh, that's correct. To, to, so now yep. to, to, to to rewind, when I first showed up, Andrew, remember how we took the measurements outside of yep. the sun? I have some individual meters here that are just kind of quick precursory checks for actual UV radiation from the sun. Okay. So in this case, this is a solar meter available on Amazon. When I aim it at the sun, Andrew, what are we getting? With about 1,900? Yeah, almost 2,000 UVA. Now, this is expressed in microwatts per centimeter square. Now, in terms of UVB, right. we're going to measure the UVB. Andrew, what was about? What do you think? 50. Okay, so we got about 50, 52 microwatts per centimeter square. This meter here, this is a Ferguson index. That's the weatherman's chart. This tells us our UV index. We've got a UV index. One three, of, one right. three. So we have a UV index of 1.3. And what, what is it when it's summer time? Five or six? Five, yeah, yeah correct. Four or five. So here, Mark, you can read the numbers because it'll be hard to see it on yeah. the camera. If I come down here, what is my UVA? It's at 531. Okay, 531 microwatts per centimeter square, yeah. right? If I come under the halide, it's about uh, 1650. Okay, so 1600 microwatts per centimeter square, so considerably more UV, but that's not really surprising. Right. Okay, now when we get into UVB, mm -hmm. this is where things become interesting. Why do we care I'm about UVB? Okay, UVB is part of. This is this is this the, the is billion Martin, dollar question, right? This is why How Martin, important is this thing? I knew this. This is why Mark is here. Yep. So UVB comprises an important part of solar radiation, which is the sun. Okay. Because it is scientific fact that without 295 nanometer, our bodies do not process vitamin D. So okay. we are naturally exposed to UVB every single day. And I demonstrated this to Andrew when I took my meters outside and measured the sun. Right. And this other meter here, when you have your weather person and they talk about Ferguson the UV index, index mm -hmm. this is where they derive the UV index. Okay. So what we so what we see is we can agree that there's UVA yeah. with the with the halide producing a considerable amount of right. that, right? Now for UVB, what is my halide reading? 169. Okay, 169 it's bouncing around microwatts per centimeter yeah, square. Which is way different than before. Here's the thing, when we measured the sun yesterday, and it yeah. is January and we have to take in winter conditions. Right. Okay, that reading was 50. 50? Yeah. Okay. The, the expected UVB for the audience, the expected UVB range mm -hmm. 
full sunlight, yeah. full conditions, is right. two to three hundred microwatts per centimeter square. Okay. That's a good average. All right. Okay. So again, we have the halide producing more UVB. It was well, producing we don't three times yet. as much. We don't. Well, we as don't know yet outside. because with the LED, uh -huh. what is the reading? <laughs> zero. Right. So there's literally zero, 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 zero. Now, a and I assure you, we've tested that under the yeah. UV. You try it down here, though. <laughs> we actually, te we actually oh, tested okay, this. Yeah, at this level, it's still all zeros. We actually tested this on the UV Orphic bars under them specifically mm -hmm. and got zero too. Mm. Now our UV index, yeah. if I place this here, what's my reading? 11.5. Okay, now, what's the highest reading on this meter? Seven. Right. So and and what, do those, what do those mean? It's just zones, it says right? Danger. Desert. Yeah. Right. It says danger. Now this <laughs> means you're going to get a suntan there. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm like, I didn't bring any sunscreen. <laughs> in all fairness, in all fairness, because this is a straight up shot, right? We're dealing with wattage, 250 watts to keep the light sources right. similar. Yeah. But this light source, in all fairness, is designed for penguins and sea turtles, applications that we use for public aquariums. Okay. So it's no surprise to get such high UV readings right. from this unit yeah. because that was what I anticipated. But so you can do this one? Zero. Yeah. So there's you no want, UV index at you all. You do the meter this way. I'm you just, can hold it up. I just can't believe these numbers. So down uh, here, like I said. I mean, it was absolute. It wasn't even close. We can even turn it this way so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. And see up here, it's at zero, right? Yep. And then over here, it's visible at around 13. It depends where my hand is, but oh, right. ballpark. But still, way but beyond eight. Something would be, this would be a few feet. This would be. And that's with a piece of glass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is with a piece of and glass. And the glass is to help block you. Right. But now here's where. His glass, his glass is meant to before put it through. We, before, we, before we shut everything down and do the spectral side, right? Mm -hmm. We've always wondered, we've speculated about the PPFD. Right. Right? Because we were told that LEDs and halides and the differences, right? Right. Okay, so now, Mark, I'm going to let you operate the meter. Okay. Take your power meter yep. and, you know, use your finger or something, get a relative. Right. And because this is a specific aim, we're going to point it directly at the light and itself what we do, and Mark, not angle it. Is the is the level of the output of the LED the same as the halide? We discussed yeah, this earlier. Yeah, I mean, earlier. it looks like they're different, but that's because of the glass shield. Right. The light bulb is up higher at this point, so they the match. The light sources are yeah, the about bulb the same. And yep. this are the exact yep. same height. So we'll turn on the PAR meter. You get to see it here first, guys. And I'm holding it under the Radeon, which is a Gen 6 Pro, not the blue one. At 100%. And it's running at 100%. I'm just going to keep my hand at this level. Yeah. And that's measuring 314, 313. And I'm just going to come right here. And I'm at 417, 418. So this has over 100 more PAR. PPFD, more PAR. Yeah. And that 100 that? exists. It exists. If you go up, it's going to see the same 100. Oh, yeah. Same 100. Now I'm at. 1442. Of course, we can cook it at 2600. Yeah. But if I come up here, hey, we got the same numbers. That's nice. Yeah. So this was at 2100 at that level. And if I just go straight across, it's at 22, 2300. It's bouncing around because I'm moving. It's Normally, you would fix right. this on something. So it's like 2500 right there. But as we get lower. But as we get lower, oh. now at this level, it's at 600. No, well, that's 700. Let's see what we have across. Go there. straight across. 986. Yeah, a couple hundred more. Yep. And then here it's 669. Straight across. 460, 450. So now, Mark, let me ask you this honestly, because as my witness, mm -hmm. you witnessed this all being set up. Yeah. It, is it fair to say that nothing was staged to, <laughs> no. to allow any favoritism no. to either technology? No, matter of fact, one thing you did mention earlier we haven't even talked about. If you put your hand here and you feel the heat coming off those LEDs, it's actually pretty significant right there. That's way away from the water. But if you put your hand here, it feels the same heat. Yeah, it's That's very like close. Glass, pretty they're close. Very, they're both very hot. I mean, as we just saw, you know, we had me left here. We ran tests. Uh, we ran this this video on YouTube some time ago. We had a lot of discussions, I think close to 300 comments. And we have two 250s right next to each other. One with and with one without. exactly opposing right. lighting. It, 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 it's gonna be a discussion that's always gonna be had. Some people are very old school and like their metal halides and can run them. Some people wanna go with LEDs because they look, look, you love the controllability, right? I, I mean, love them. I mean, you, you're dealing with the 17,000 round tape, but I, you like the controllability of yeah, else. Yeah. But now we have a big decision to make, and we have a 2,500 gallon tank that, um, you know, we, we're, we're doing a major, uh, 
major things are happening with, with several folks from the Aquascape. And the next thing, you know, Jonathan's working on the controllers. And right after that, we're gonna start considering flow and lighting. So, it's a difficult decision on a 2500, as you know, because it's four feet. Yep. That extra foot, if you're running SPS tank, right. you're not gonna get the punch um, from the LEDs for that, for that extra foot. Yep. You run a mixed reef where you have a Cantros on the bottom, an LPS on the bottom. Yeah, it's too much. It might be too much with the headlights and the LEDs might be better. Right. So, um, well, I feel like the 250 metal headlights, a lot of what people do a lot of the time. They put it, they, they put they, them, yep, they put them near the high high parts of they, the coral line. But you look at ACI. Yep. Okay, you look at Joe Waiulo's tank. Those, yep. those, those are like mixed reefs, right? Yep. Uh, up in Long Island. Yep. They run the metal halides a little higher, which we do have a lot more room yep. this time around. Yep. And they sometimes stagger those lights, right? Yep. So they're not going to, it's not going to be 12 p.m. and then boom, you get all the metal halides on. You might get staggered from left to right, kind of like how the sun rises and, and sets. Correct. And then I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to probably run blades or, uh, or Orfix or Reef Brights or whatever right. in terms of supplemental blues. Correct. And, and so I would, I would suspect that the hair lights would only be on three, four hours a day. Tops. Right, right, right. And that's, and you know, we. And, and uh, I would assume 250s on top again, right. where the coral's the highest, and 400s where we need the depth. That's good stuff. So, guys, I want to thank you all for uh, watching this episode too. Our next episode is going to be on flow. If you guys are liking this, please share it. You know, like and subscribe and follow us. A lot more great content is coming. We're going to talk a lot more about uh, philanthropy. We have this amazing visit, first ever to, to see the site uh, out in SeaWorld. We can't say too much about it because it hasn't been introduced to the, the public. But, um, you know, just want to thank everyone for, um, for following us.